On today's episode of the Leadership Launchpad, I'm gonna give you three practical tips that you can start using today to build the level of trust on your team. Hello and welcome, my name is Matt Jertsen. I'm the founder of Better Everyday Studios, and as you can see, I'm filming this week out on the road. I'm at a learning and development conference, so hopefully the audio is okay, but I wanted to make sure to get this episode out this week because we're talking about trust, which to me is an absolutely fundamental element of building a high-performing team that often gets missed, or at least the conversation around it isn't really what I think it should be. It's not as practical as it should be. If you've ever read the book, The Five Dysfunctions of a Team by Patrick Lencioni, but by the way, if you haven't read it, you really need to. It's a, it's a thin book. It's a short read. You can get through it easily in a week. In that book, Patrick Lencioni lays out this framework of five dysfunctions that a team has to overcome in order to create a high-performing environment. And it's arranged as a, as a pyramid where the bottom layer is this, this foundation of trust. And I think, you know, if you think about it, when we talk about performance, very often we talk about the, you know, the work that has to get done, the tools that we're using, making sure people have enough resources, making sure people are focused and know what they're going to be doing. But that's missing a lot because if we don't talk about the relationships of the people, if we don't talk about whether or not people are in a trusting environment or as Amy Edmondson would call it, a psychologically safe environment, then the truth is that people aren't going to be showing up. They're not going to be doing the best work possible. Not only are they maybe not going to be as invested in the work as they could be, but also if you just think about the kinds of things that come out of trust, they're not going to share their ideas as regularly because for fear maybe of getting put down. Or or if somebody else is sharing an idea and they have concerns, they're not going to raise their hand. If the leader is sharing something and they have concerns, they're certainly not going to raise their hand and say, hey boss, I think something's wrong if you're not, you know, if, if, if they don't have that, that trusting relationship in place. When people do talk about trust, the challenge with that, the conversation as I hear it is that it's not in a very practical sense of what are the practical ways that you can build trust on your team. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Three simple practical tips that you can use to start building trust on, on your team. And the, the first of those is simply to start asking about the people on your team, not about the work that they're doing, but about them as a person. And I get it, you know, I've worked in a lot of technical organizations and I've been a technical person and I totally understand the the desire to want to focus on, okay, what's the next task? Are there any blockers? You know, you just zero in on getting the work done. But whenever you have a one-on-one with people on your team, or even if you stop and you're, you know, you're getting coffee or something, you should really make sure to chat about and ask them questions about things going on in their lives or things going on outside of work. Because I had kind of a mic drop moment uh, several years ago at a leadership training that I was in where somebody was kind of sitting in the room and he asked everybody, okay, how many has kids? And uh, how many people have kids? And a bunch of people raised their hand. How many people would say that uh, their kids are more important than their work? And of course, every, everybody raised their hand. How many people would say that their kids are the most important thing in their lives? And basically, everybody who had kids raised their hand. Then he asked them, okay, so of all the, man- this is all managers in the room, how many of you can name, can give the names of the kids of the people on your team? Nobody could raise their hand. Nobody could say the name, could tell the names of the people on their team, the, the kids of the people on their team. And so, so he just pauses. Like, so you're telling me that everybody on your team that has kids, the kids are the most important thing in their lives, but you do not even know their names. Why do you think they're going to bring their best selves to work? Why do, you, why do you expect to get absolutely the most out of them? There's no way you can possibly do that if you don't understand this, this fundamental part of their lives. And it was just such a, like, an aha moment for me. Of, of course, we can always say, oh, I don't care about the work, personal stuff. I want to keep personal and work separately. And if there's people on your team like that, that's totally respect that. But just asking simple questions like, what did you do this weekend? Or, you know, do you have, is there anything you're, you're building up to in your life? Do you have, what do you want to do next year? Or, you know, where do you want your career to go? Those can go a long way to start building a relationship between you and the people on your team that isn't just based on work. 
And then the second tip I have is that you get those conversations happening between people on your team as well. And you can use many of those same questions of, you know, what did you do this weekend or what's the last book you read? But just introduce those questions in a team environment. You spend the first five minutes of every team meeting talking about those other kinds of non-work things so that people can start to get connected as individuals, as people, instead of coworkers. It, I've seen it firsthand how much that can transform people's ability to, you know, give somebody grace, understand, you know, give them the benefit of the doubt if they make a mistake, to actually, you know, try to work with pe each other to help improve. If you can use these simple five minutes of just talking about non-work things, it can go a long way to really helping people feel more safe and secure in their team. So those are really simple things that you can do in your next one-on-one, -on -one, in your next team meeting. They, they don't take a lot of effort. This third step does take a little bit more effort, and it's by filling out, the, the tip is filling out something that I call a user manual for me. And if you think about it, what is a user manual? A user manual is just, how do you use this thing? And, and anybody that you've worked with, probably if you've worked with them for six months, 12 months, you get to know them as an individual in a way where you know the best way to work with them, right? How to give them feedback. Uh, what's the best way to send them an email? Do they even want an email? Or is it better to walk up to them and say hello? You know, there's all these things and a user manual for me is just an attempt to you sit down and you write it out for yourself so that you can give it to the people on your team and they immediately know, you know, what's the best way to convince you of an idea? What are the traits in somebody that you, you know, most respect? What are the traits in someone that, you know, annoy you the most? Just this, this simple list. And I'll, I'll link to an example that I have in the show notes below. So that, you know, the idea is that you fill this out and give it to your team, especially new team members, so they instantly know the best way to work with you. But then, if you're up for this, you also have them fill it out as well. And it can be a really great team building exercise, right? Where, you know, it's kind of like filling out a personality assessment and then discussing it amongst the team. Except it, this is, I, I kind of like this because it's a little bit more direct. It's not, you know, filling out a personality assessment. It gives you a person, it gives you your personality and then tells you all these things about you. You're just writing down those things about you and saying, you know, what annoys me or what I like most or what brings, what brings me energy. And so it can be a really great discussion where I've seen teams, you know, uncover wholly new ways of working together just through taking, you know, it can be a half hour, hour long discussion as long as people, you know, take the time beforehand to fill it out. And then you just have a quick discussion. Again, the key to this is finding ways to connect people, not just through work, but as individuals. Because if you want to build a high performing team, the key thing is finding ways to get people to work together. That is what creates a high performing team. So those are the three simple tips. You know, first you start connecting with the individuals on your team directly about non-work stuff, then get the people on your team connecting on non-work stuff. And then you can use something like a user manual for me to just go a little bit deeper and have a really good discussion about the best ways to work together. I hope you found this helpful and I will see you again next time on the Leadership Launchpad. Thank you so much for listening today. If you are a fan of this podcast and have ideas for future episodes, I would really love to hear from you. Send an email to podcast at bettereverydaystudios.com and we would love to incorporate your ideas into the show. While you're at it, make sure to like this episode and subscribe so you never miss a future episode. I hope you have a great rest of the week and we will see you next time on the Making Better Podcast.